The first thing you want to do when you're using alcohol markers is you want to set up a color chart for yourself so you know exactly what colors you're going to use and you want to put the numbers next to them. So I just make like a little chart and I start putting in all of my colors and I'll write the number next to it. Ohuhu makes these nice little sample cards that I keep in the bag, um, but I find with all those other colors around it, um, I wanna isolate just the colors that I think I'm gonna need in my drawing. So I do make a separate color chart um, for this particular drawing. And then I just map them out and I'm gonna do the same thing for all of my color pencils that I'm gonna use. I'm also gonna swatch those out, put the numbers next to them. The thing about alcohol markers is that the cap color and the color that comes out of the marker do not necessarily match. And when it's wet, it looks one color, and when it dries, it dries a little bit differently. So you definitely wanna make sure you do your homework and you get a nice swatch chart. It'll make your life a whole lot easier as you're going along the drawing. The second thing to consider is you wanna make sure that you choose the correct paper for your project. So in this case, with the alcohol markers, they tend to bleed through if your paper is too lightweight. Um, you wanna use at least an 80 or 100 pound paper with markers. Um, they will bleed through, they'll get on your desk if you don't have a paper underneath it, and um, it'll be a big, um, hot mess if you don't use the correct paper. So I'm using a Strathmore 400 series Bristol paper so it's got a nice smooth finish. It's heavyweight enough that when you turn the paper over after drawing with the markers you will not see the marker on the back side and um, this will give you a clean crisp clear line with the marker and it's not going to bleed and cause a big disaster on your finished piece. So you'll notice as I'm putting down my swatches, the first little row, I'm going over the swatch several times because with alcohol markers, you can get several colors out of one marker. If you put down one pass of marker, it's gonna be a light version of that color. And then as you go over it more and more, it's gonna get darker and darker. So you can see as I'm putting it down, I'm putting down one coat and then I'll go over the front part and I'll put down another coat and it gets darker to see how it builds up the ink. So you want to make sure that you do this and this way you know um, exactly if you go over an area more than once you're gonna it's gonna become darker and you're gonna want to have that swatched out. Now I'm gonna show you my finished swatch card that I made for this particular drawing and then we'll get into the balloon dog. If you hop over to my community page, I give you the sketch, I give you the reference image, and I am going to give you my finished product. So you can hop over to that page and check it out and you can draw along with me um, as we get through this exercise. Now you always want to start out with your lightest markers. It's very, very difficult to lighten something up if you start in a little too heavy handed or with a little too um, much of your dark color. So I like to put down my lightest tones of blue first and then we're going to build those up. We're going to add in our deep dark shadow parts and then we're going to go in with our mid-tones and start blending all of that together. You can click on the card above and it will take you to my video on how to blend alcohol markers. Now you can see I'm purposely leaving out some of the white spots, which are gonna be my brighter highlighted um, colors. So I leave those out, because if you go over them with the marker, you're not gonna be able to lighten them up enough um, later on down the road. I mean, you could use a jelly roll pen or an acrylic marker um, or the brush and pencil titanium white but I prefer to leave them out from the beginning it also helps me see as I'm drawing where those bright highlights are going to be and I know how to make my transitions next to them 
So I'm starting in with my deepest, darkest tones, and we're just putting the first of that down, and we can refine it as we go along, but this um, is allowing me to see where those dark, shadowy areas are, and then when we go back in to start blending the markers together, we're going to use the lightest color again, and we're going to go over that, as you will see in that blending video. Um, if you haven't used the alcohol markers before. Now I'm going to go in with my mid-tone marker and I'm going to just start adding some of those mid-tones in. So you can see as I go over it, it's going to blend some of those darker shades together with my mid-tone and make a really smooth um, finished look to it. Um, and we'll keep building on this as we go along. And then we're going to go in with our color pencils and add some of our details and add a little bit more um, to our transitions to get a nice smooth look from your darkest areas into your lightest areas. And being very, very careful not to um, put too much of my darker shades in. It's very unforgiving when you're working with alcohol markers because, like I said earlier, if you put down something too dark, it's very, very difficult to lighten it up, even with a white color pencil over top of it. It's never going to get light enough. So just really pay attention to where you're putting those colors. I'm going in with my blue colored pencils now, and we're just going to start to um, smooth out all of those transitions. And what I mean by those transitions is where all of your dark colors meet your light colors. And we're just going to give a nice light coat of color pencil over everything um, to just make it look really seamless and just make everything blend really well together. Color pencil and alcohol markers work really well together. The color pencil glides right over the alcohol marker, so no need to worry that it's not going to blend together. It will, and you can still go over top of the color pencil with more marker. So just, you know, let the marker dry a little bit in between. It takes a couple of seconds. Alcohol markers dry really quickly, so um, you don't have to worry about stepping away. Like paint, if you um, use paint and you want to really do a detail on top of acrylic or something like that, you want to let it dry before you go back in. In this case, it takes about 15 seconds and you can go right over that with the color pencil. When you're drawing something shiny, like uh, this balloon dog, um, you just want to really pay good attention to your values. You want to definitely have a nice bright highlight. You want to have your mid-tone and you want to have your dark shadow color. So you need at least three um, colors. I use a lot more than that um, only because I like to layer and I like the look of it when it's done when you add a lot of uh, color into it and more colors than just the three main colors so just pay attention to that look at your reference image and you want to definitely push your values so you could do this dog in any other color. Um, I did a gold balloon dog. I'll reference that in the card above and you can check that one out. Um, but you can really change the color on this. It could be pink, it could be green, it could be yellow. As long as you get your values correct, you'll have a nice shiny looking a balloon dog in the end um, just get those values correct and make sure you push your values don't stop too soon keep pushing those values keep blending make your transition seamless and you'll have a nice beautiful finished product in the end if you're enjoying today's video, I'd love it if you guys would leave me a comment in the comment section below, or you can just leave me a question. I do get back to each and every one of you, and I love hearing from you guys. It makes me feel closer to you. While you're at it, if you would smash that thumbs up button, um, it helps my videos go out to a broader audience, and it makes me feel so much more appreciated when you smash that like button. 
So we're really gonna push our values at this stage. I'm going back in with my darkest blues and I'm just paying close attention to where all those really heavy shadows are. And I'm just gonna go ahead and reinforce all of those heavy uh, shadowy parts, which is gonna make it look more round and more kind of uh, balloon-like um, to have everything kind of in the right spot. So just giving our finishing touches and we're going to just like refer back to our reference image and see what we need to tweak a little bit. If you need to uh, use your kneaded eraser to clean up any colored pencil crumbs, make sure to do that so your hand's not dragging them around the paper. You'll have a nice clean background. If you just every so often use that kneaded eraser and then just double check all of those tones and values Go in with your lighter color and work on your transitions. As you go over with the lighter marker, it kind of blends everything underneath it together and gives you a really um, smooth finish. So that's what we're trying to achieve here, kind of towards the end of this drawing. I want to thank you guys so much for joining me. Thanks for supporting my channel. I put a lot of work into it and I really love the fact that you guys come back each and every week. I put out a new video every week, usually on Thursday or Friday, so check back. Make sure to hit the notification bell and you'll get notified every time a new video comes out. I want to thank you guys so much and happy art.